How do we take power back? By voting, by protesting. No, you simply take the power back. In this conversation from my podcast, Under the Skin, on Luminary, available on Apple, Khan Ross, former British government employee who was so disgusted with the government that he turned into an anarchist, explains how the principles and systems of anarchy can be applied to provide us with an alternative way of running our own systems, running our own lives, rather than living within structures that can never change because they themselves require the structures to remain permanent. Have a listen. You don't agree with sort of municipal public own or what nationalised ownership of railways and things like that? Not you'd by say, the state, no. Not by the I state. Mean, I don't believe in state ownership, no. I believe in local ownership and communal control and, you know, full dem- democratic control of institutions and utilities like railways or banks or whatever. Maybe a centralised government could start us on the way to that, but they couldn't complete the task. Absolutely not. But it could be transitional in the same way that socialism was transitional I'm a, to... Well, I don't hear that in the Labour Party's current No, program. no, nor do I, nor I do I, mate. I d- don't hear them talking about a transitional programme. I mean, you're right, it's because it ain't there. But, like, the, but I, well, could, you know, <laughs> I say we, we, the people, us, could, uh, could we stand to say, look, we want to stand in this election, and what we propose is after this, we decentralise power yeah. wherever possible. Well, there are political parties that do that. I what? mean, there, there is one in Denmark that's proposing that, called the Alternative. It's always actually... the bloody Scandinavians, isn't it? Yeah. What is it, the air? <laughs> The well, pornography? it's, it's, it's um, <laughs> proportional representation, to be precise, oh. that allows it in Scandinavia. A first-past-the-post system is obviously militates particularly against small parties. Mm. But uh, in that circumstance, and indeed, frankly, in all capitalist societies, I think the idea of getting elected to make changes is, is a naive one. I think we have to create change ourselves. And oh. I don't think we take over Tesco's, we create an alternative Tesco's. I believe not in overthrowing structures, particularly violently, because I think that is a, a kind of change that just invites reaction and legitimises mm. the reaction. I believe in constructive alternative systems that are better, yes. that attend to people's needs. And I think, you know, we're, we're very much stuck in a culture of protest and voting yeah. and aggro on the internet. And none of these methods will give us the society we want. The only thing that will give us a society we want is constructing things, institutions, uh, processes, um, forums, companies, changing the nature of the company itself, our social relations from the micro to the macro is constructing that ourselves. And that takes work. And in Occupy, I saw... You know, a lot of people were happy to come to the square and 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 protest. It was a much much smaller group of people who took the time to go away and spend literally years trying to construct something that would endure. So it's a it's a it's work. Yes, it's work, isn't it? It's curious because sort of polarity suggests an integral relation to the other, which you're trying to overthrow you know like if you're involved in the kind of you, you're connected to it you can't yes. break it with a protest movement that's fascinating well, you legitimize it actually i think protest legitimizes the thing it protests against it says that you are you are meaningful you matter when in fact actually this you know these institutions that are iniquitous exploitative dominant socially domineering need to be just ignored because whilst we create something better they will dissolve away they will evaporate because we've created something that is so much more compelling and exciting and human and just better yes. and that is that is a model of change in our current circumstance it doesn't require you to go out in the streets and throw yourself under tank tracks it doesn't require you to throw molotov cocktails it doesn't require you to vote for somebody who's you know might or might not deliver the change you wish to see it it requires something else actually just a pragmatic cooperation with colleagues who share the same ambition to build something and that is really fun i mean it's actually really satisfying to try and build something new it's difficult you know and you'll fail you may fail a hundred times we it may take us a thousand ships to launch. We may need to launch a thousand ships for one of them to get through. But if that one gets through, then we, we can succeed. That Occupy movement was like that bloody punk gig that Morrissey and New Order and everything was at. You know, like it's sort of like it was like this moment Occupy that seems to have spawned a, a great many thinkers, theorists, activists, Ideologists, it's it's ripples us very much felt. I think today, yeah. it's so, a wave. It's a wave of something. It's a real. It was a real cry out that things are not right. 
Mm. Uh, and in America, where I was living at the time, it made inequality a political topic that is of extraordinary mm. importance. You know that even Obama couldn't talk about inequality until Occupy came along and made it a legitimate topic of discussion. So that was a huge achievement in itself. But then we now need to reflect on where that protest took us. It didn't create the transformation we all we all want to see. Now we need to be asking ourselves what would. When listening to people talk about capitalism uh, and, and say the, the state, the system, call it what you will, these relationships between powerful institutions, corporate, uh, national, international, it, the, what I am astonished by and afraid of is the rem- remarkable efficacy in consuming counterculture, how cu- counterculture is promoted into the mainstream, how these things become sort of uh, eviscerated and turned into emblems. Mm-hmm. So, like, this uh, idea you have, and which I think I've read stuff about in Buckminster Fuller, that guy, create alternative systems and uh, simply begin living in accordance with them. Mm-hmm. I, I wonder, like, what I suppose, even though you say this, you know, that anarchism is inherently not about a vision because a vision proposes a kind of fascism, I suppose it has stitched into it. Here mm-hmm. is the utopia to which we must head. No, not mm-hmm. like that. <laughs> like, like, so, like, um, it m- means, doesn't it, like on the ground or where we are in the moment, that what we have to do is simply begin to organise things differently. Mm-hmm. Like go, oh, let's set up a, a radio station or a supermarket mm-hmm. or whatever it is that's not run like that. And like, mm-hmm. what's that? What's that? Gro- the Spanish example, Mon- Mondragon. Mondragon. Well, that's a bloody good Spanish accent, mate. <laughs> that you just swapped out. Fake. I don't really speak Spanish. Well, for that moment, <laughs> by God, you had Mondragon. me fooled. Yeah. <laughs> Mondragon, I suppose a little right, aren't they? What is Mondragon? What is it? It's a, it's a, it's a huge cooperative company, a con- conglomerate of cooperatives um, that is, I think, Spain's tenth largest company now. It covers insurance, banking, uh, manufacturing. Uh, based in the Basque region. Um, and hmm. again, it demonstrates that a cooperative economic model is, is entirely uh, practical and effective. I mean, it's not problem free. And no, you know, I think one of the other important things to understand about anarchism is it doesn't claim the human is perfect. It doesn't claim that these things will come without trouble. You know, uh, it takes a great deal of effort and it will take imperfection and it won't necessarily work as well as we w- might wish it would work. But it is plausible. I think once you take away the sort of aesthetic beauty, the sort of claim of aesthetic perfection from political change, then it actually becomes more uh, reachable. Uh, You know, it's dirty, it's rough, but it's manageable. It's not something that is uh, a beautiful geometric design. It's not a it's not a romantic painting. It's something that's actually just about our everyday rough and ready circumstances. And actually, we can change those things much, much, much more easily than we think. We've been told we can't change things. And I think the left in particular has got awfully good at explaining cultural phenomena as a reason change doesn't happen rather than going out and actually trying it. Um, You know, I think postmodernism has been a rabbit hole that the left has disappeared down into, whilst others have taken power. And I think... Tell me you mean by that, please, how postmodernity has impaired the left... Well, I, I, I perhaps rather foolishly have introduced a diversion here, but uh, but basically that uh, rather than take on power and rather than create a new kind of society, in the 60s and 70s, a lot of left-wing thinkers went into the academy and worked on postmodernism, worked on the meaning of signs and words, um, uh, the even meaning like of Foucault, itself. Derrida, yeah. or even like just yeah. sort of understanding, and, understanding on, power, ra- understanding power rather than practicing it, and believing that that understanding was a way of subverting it when in fact it isn't. It's just a way of analysing it. And actually, what we've got to think about is how to subvert power. You know, they've got it. We haven't. How do we take it back? That's in a sense the only real question that matters. Um, Ooh, they've got it. We haven't. How do we take it back? Simply by taking it back. Well, if you enjoyed that video, maybe you'll consider subscribing to Luminary. It's available on Apple. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you got a lot from this video, maybe watch this video. It's very, very similar. If you need a little bit of meditation, now go over to my side channel, Awakening with Russell Brand. Consider getting my podcast. There's meditation on there and great conversations. Subscribe to my mailing list at russellbrand.com right now.